Hello, Oracles. Well, thank you to all of you who were able to make it onto the live stream last night. It was a blast as usual. And one of the things that was uh, asked on there was what levels could Tesla hit in August, perhaps prior to the split, if that is what we are going to get at the end of the month. So are we going to hit a thousand? Could we hit all time highs in August? Well, we're going to discuss some of the catalysts that could potentially cause this to happen and what we would need to happen in order for us to get to these levels over the course of the month. First, we're going to take a look back and we've been on quite a momentum run. We are up over 32% in the month of July, which is still ahead of the indices. The Nasdaq was up over 12% and the S&P is up around 9% for the month of July. And we are up significantly from the bottom of around $620 that we hit back in May. So lots of upward momentum. And if you look at the year chart, we have been on a dead cat bounce basically since last October. You know, we got the Hertz news. We uh, boosted all the way up to all time highs of 1243. And then we kind of started to trickle down. A lot of things happened over the course of that time. We had Elon selling his shares through November and December. We got a little boost in January. And then from January until just recently, we basically had a straight downward fall when it comes to the entire market. So now we have been training upwards and I was trying to pay attention and say, well, is this going to be another dead cat bounce? So um, a lot of different factors to look at. And it looks like this trend since we have hit that bottom at 620, the trend up is different than we had been on the other dead cat bounces. So it seems like as of right now, we are moving in the right direction. Now, there is words saying that, you know, because we crossed 4000 in the S&P, we're now in a gamma squeeze, which means that the entire market is going to squeeze much higher very quickly. We've seen that in the last couple of days since we crossed the 4000 mark. So how much longer will this last? Is it truly a gamma squeeze? We do not know. Other uh, people have been speaking about us falling down to 3400 in the S&P. So the macro is still going to play a uh, big role in whether we hit a thousand or all time highs here in August. So these are the levels that we're going to pay attention to. So if we do pull back to that 4000 level in the S&P, we're going to need to pay attention to see if that holds as a strong support or if we break through and fall further. And now when it comes to Tesla in particular, we need to pay attention to some support and resistance levels as well. So going up, closing at 891 was amazing. Now, of course, the next psychological level that we have to pass is the $900 mark. So there's gonna be three psychological levels we need to cross in order to get to 1,000. Very simple, 900, 950, and $1,000. There are two other resistance levels along the way, not extremely strong, but there were definitely good support and resistance levels in the past. One is around the $935 mark, and the other one is around $976. So in order to get to 1,000, we are going to need to cross these thresholds. And so some of the catalysts we are going to need, we are still going to need macro assistance. So as long as we don't have any major macro issues that pull us down, we could see this trend continue upward. And so the catalyst that we're looking for, the first one's going to be obviously the annual shareholder meeting we have coming up this week. It is on August 4th, this Thursday. So we're gonna be paying attention to this, you know, if they announce any good news. Uh, obviously, if the split vote is voted for, uh, that's going to do very well. But these are things we kind of anticipated. So the big pieces we're going to need out of the annual shareholder meeting to really give us a good boost forward going to be any news on new products, maybe the timeline of Cybertruck being more specific than just midsummer of next year, uh, any new product information, any new factory information, new information for fundamental use of the company could propel the stock forward even more. The next catalyst is going to be the macro stuff, which is CPI and PPI data. That is going to come out on August 10th for the CPI and August 11th for the PPI. So when we get this data here, it's really going to di dictate, you know, how the macro is going to move. So if we get a good number that people are expecting, we still don't know what expectations are for the CPI. But if we do get a good number trending in the right direction, something that the market likes, we can continue this trend going forward. So it's really not a matter of a catalyst that's going to drive us higher, more so as a uh, catalyst that's not going to get in our way and impede progress. And then, of course, we've got the split. So perhaps going into the week ahead of the split, and we do not know the date. We actually at this point don't even know if it's going to pass shareholder vote. We are assuming it is. However, looking at how Google and Amazon both traded heading into their splits, they had a little bit of a run a week ahead of time. So if we get to that point and the split does happen near the end of this month or beginning of September, we could see that week long rally that does push us even higher. 
So as long as we haven't been held back by the macro of any sort, we could potentially see $1,000 in the stock price ahead of the split. And I know that's kind of crazy to talk about because a few months ago, we were discussing whether we were going to hit $1,000 again before the split. And I honestly didn't think we would, you know, and still at this point, it's, it's a, more of a potential now than I thought it was back two or three months ago. But we have been definitely trending and Tesla has the ability to move quite rapidly as we have seen this past week and this past month. So there is still a chance that we could get there. And I'm glad that we are moving in this direction direction because my goodness the last week or so has definitely brought back those feelings of that euphoria that we've had in the past and it's really nice uh it's nice to have these feelings this is the the feelings that we are used to having and it's nice to continue this going forward so for those of you who held strong for the first half of the year congratulations because you have definitely earned this wonderful feeling and now to discuss all-time highs what are the chances that we hit all-time highs in the month of august now this is going to be a little more difficult um it's a long way to go to get there again the all-time high is over 1243 so so things that could be a catalyst to cause us to get there. If at the annual shareholder meeting, they do announce that the split has been passed and then they also announce stock buybacks, that could be a massive catalyst that could drive us significantly higher. So we could at that point definitely blow right past $1,000 without question and then start to question, can we hit all time highs? Now, as far as I know, a buyback would also require shareholder approval. So that would mean that we would have to vote on that as well. Now, I could be wrong, correct me if I am wrong, but from the information that I have and the knowledge I have, a vote would need to take place for the buyback as well. And then the next catalyst that could drive us to all time highs will be the S&P upgrading Tesla's credit rating to investor grade. If we get that as a surprise in the month of August, I think that could be another catalyst that could potentially drive the stock even higher, closer to all time highs. Now, another piece that is more macro related that could potentially do this is if magically somehow the Ukraine and Russia war comes to an end. If that ends in August, you could definitely see a massive rally coming in the stock market. And then at that point, Tesla would then trend with the macro as well, giving it a stronger ability to cross to all time highs. And then, of course, there's always the chance that Tesla just comes out and surprises us with something of any sort, some surprising news, maybe the announcement of a compact car any sort of special announcements as a surprise that no one was expecting could also potentially drive the stock that much higher to all-time highs and now as Hedgeway had mentioned in the comments to me as well once we cross $923 in the stock if we do get to that point that will mean that we are in a bull market for the stock itself which is outstanding because we have not seen a bull market for the stock for almost six months. And so at that point, going to a bull market is another great catalyst that could continue to drive us forward. Just this momentum swing that we are on is looking very promising. Um, and I have to be realistic, you know, with how much we have been moving up in the entire market altogether. Some of you have been mentioning that it does feel like a bit of a bull trap. If it is, I don't think it's going to be a massive pullback bull trap. It's more of a, you know what, we've got this gamma squeeze going on. We are running up very quickly. Maybe just some profit taking to cool off. You know, questions that were asked are, what is the support right now for Tesla? There really isn't one. You know, we've seen it in the past. Tesla runs up so high so fast, it doesn't have a chance to actually find a support level. So at this point right now, the 742 gap that we have going down is what I am paying attention to as what could potentially be a bottom. We have been making nice higher lows since we hit 620 back in May. We have been making higher gaps all along the way as well. So if we do end up pulling back to fill this 742 gap, I have buys in at 750 in my IRA, and then I'll be looking for it to bounce off of that 742 or around that mark, and then continue that trend upward. Now we did discuss it on the live stream last night as well, Abhishek in the comments had mentioned how, you know, perhaps we fill that 742 gap post split, which would mean that we'd be filling it at $247. So if we do continue these tr this trend upwards and we cross $1,000 for whatever reason, and then we split after that, I'll be paying attention to the post split sell off. You know, most of the time, historically, regardless of the company, we saw both happen with Amazon and Google this year, they run up into the split, they split, and then there's a bit of a sell-off after the split. 
So if we do end up getting that sell off after the split, maybe that's when we do fill the gap down to 247. Again, nobody knows the future, just paying attention to, you know, what could potentially happen for the stock. But seeing as right now, the macro environment is very optimistic, forward looking, a lot of good information pointing in the right directions, just waiting for the next piece of info, which is the CPI data, there could be some uncertainty going into that information. So just pay attention to some of the volatility. We're totally not out of the woods yet. We still have high inflation, still have the war going on in Ukraine and Russia. So still things to pay attention to, but the signs and the fundamentals of the economy are starting to point in the right direction. And so while Tesla does have a beta of over two, which means that it usually moves twice as much as the broader market, when we do get into bull run times, Tesla does definitely outperform the market significantly more than its beta says. So again, we've seen that over the course of the month with the NASDAQ being up 12% and Tesla being up 32%. That's closer to a beta of three. So we are definitely seeing that trend upward. We are definitely seeing Tesla start to break out from the macro. And so we're starting to see it again. We are starting to see Tesla outperforming the markets, but you gotta remember that on the downswing, it could also swing just as hard. So just something to pay attention to, but those of you who are long-term investors in Tesla totally understand the volatile swings that the stock can go on. And so in conclusion, do I think that we are going to be able to cross $1,000? I think there's actually a, a viable shot. We have a chance of crossing that. As long as the macro does not collapse underneath us, I think we have a legitimate shot of crossing $1,000. All-time highs, on the other hand, we are going to need some serious catalysts and some big surprises, basically the complete opposite of the black swan events that we got in the beginning of the year to come through to push us to those all-time highs. So I'm not saying it can't happen, just saying we're gonna need some big help to get there. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Do you think that we could cross a thousand? Do you think that we could hit all-time highs? And what catalysts do you think we need to get there? And then also, do you think we are still going to come down and fill that 742 gap? Now, gaps fill at nine out of 10 times. Uh, I am going to be getting on a live stream uh, probably next Friday. Um, I will get on the live stream and I'm gonna break down on the charts for you guys to show you where the gaps are and show you how I follow and track all of that uh, to give you guys uh, a way to, to learn it on your own. But let me know if you guys think that we will fill that 742 gap at some point, maybe over the course of the month, or after the split, or not at all. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support and feedback. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Sign yourself up for notifications. I am over on Twitter at OracleTim1. I share all the latest Tesla news, pertinent stock market information, and all of my daily trades. We do have a Discord chat. That link is down in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel any further, we do have a Patreon. That link is also in the description. Thank you so much. Have a great one.